When we first came here, the fish were so depleted because the fishing methods had become more destructive. And you could go along a coral reef for 10 minutes and hardly see a fish. As a marine biologist, I quickly realized that I really wanted to do something that was going to make a difference. We know that if these areas are properly protected, if they're looked after by the community, then we see recovery and protection of the ocean. We're on the Danahan Bank, one of six double barrier reefs in the world. It's globally significant, this place, from a marine biodiversity point of view. Plastic is not meant to be in the ocean at all, and it does no good to anything. Plastic has been found in every single bit of the ocean that people have looked. What we have been working on is how do we solve marine conservation in poor fishing communities like we find here in this part of the Philippines. And if you're worried about where your next meal is coming from, how you're gonna pay for your child to go to school, how you're gonna treat a parent who's sick, your needs are absolutely immediate. And that's the balance that we've been struggling to find. Many of our team are also community organizers people who can talk to people. So I can stand here and talk to the community about science, but without un understanding what's going on for these communities, what their daily concerns and pressures are, then we can't come up with solutions. We knew there were a lot of fishing nets on the island. You can see them lying around, entangled in the mangroves, lying on the beaches more and more nets are being used as there's less and less fish and people are more and more desperate. They're trying to find those fish and they need more nets to do so. I was convinced by the people because the fish were there, so now they can find the fish and they can help with the additional income. We were able to develop a global supply chain to collect nets, aggregate nets, bale nets, export nets from the Philippines to Europe, recycle those nets to nylon yarn that then can be made into carpet. Working with, with MADS, Network's regional manager, and has been really one of the brainchilds. So we've worked together almost 20 years almost now. 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> the first generation of nets that we collected are very, used to be very dirty because people were collecting nets that had been on the shoreline for years. No? But here, we are collecting them straight from the, the areas where they replace and they mend the nets, huh? which is just a proof that we are effective because um, fishers are no longer throwing their uh, used fishing nets into the fishing ground. Just from this one island, we've had 18 tons of nets. And so we can make a difference. There is hope, there is optimism, and there are solutions, but we need innovation and collaboration to do that. What is so inspiring for me is actually seeing what communities who have so very little can actually do and how much change they can make. Heather represents the science behind this thing. People can easily buy into something that's supported with strong science. From a small island in the Philippines, we're part of a solution that works economically, it works environmentally, it works for the people who live here. All of these things are making a difference every day to people's lives. We are very convinced that the tool that we have developed, that we have evolved, is highly applicable to solve other plastics issues. 